Let me get your thoughts on this latest content. I, I imagine you're, you've been you've, you've seen this. Uh, the so-called lean mass hyper responder study that just uh, Dave Feldman, Matt Budoff at UCLA yeah. just presented uh, to yeah. wide. I don't know if I want to call it a claim, but a lot of people are talking about it. Certainly, it's got its, mm. it's obviously it's got its proponents. It's mm. got its detractors. There's over it's over interpretation. There's disregard. Yeah. This quite condescending, sneering disregard of it. Did you, did that, was that, what did you, what's your takeaway from that, if you okay. don't mind sharing? So, no, absolutely. More than happy to talk about that. The lean mass hyper responder phenotype, so called, is a construct. It's an idea that's been put together by somebody, in this case, Dave Feldman, who, as it turns out, has training as a computer technician, a, a coding specialist, some kind of engineer of that kind, rather than health science, medical science, or any of that kind of stuff. Okay, whatever. The whole premise is that, look, here's a special population of people who need not worry about high cholesterol because there's something special about these people. They are lean mass hyper responders. They are excluded from the so-called risk or so-called danger of elevated low-density lipoprotein in particular. My problem with it is that is a begging the question fallacy in that it assumes that there is anybody in the world who need be concerned about elevated low-density lipoprotein because there isn't anybody that need be concerned by that. So you are a sort of cholesterol, LDL cholesterol is not an issue, more of an absolutist. Interestingly, I don't want to interrupt you too much, but interestingly, when I talk to Dave Feldman and Nick Norwood, particularly Nick Norwood, I said, how common do you think this phenotype is? And he says, quite honestly, I think it's very common. In fact, I think the majority of the people would put in the same situations, respond very similar. Maybe their LDL wouldn't reach 500, but it might reach 220, which is still considered dangerous as a thing. So it may be that's just a normal consequence. I mean, that, that whole response, and we see it all the time, low-carb diet, triglycerides drop, HDL may go up, LDL may go up. That's pretty. That's a pretty common, generally conserved physiologic feature. And the question becomes, in my mind, at the very least, I'm at the point where I'm saying, I think LDL cholesterol is a dependent variable. And maybe it, you find it in a plaque, right? And it needs to be there for a plaque. And although they've discovered atheromas without it, which is interesting as well. Mm -hmm. But you could say that, okay, maybe it's part of the causal pathway, but it's not the only, it's not the initiating the initiator, it's not the, it's very much dependent upon the environment that it's placed upon. Yeah. And you're saying, hey, it, don't even worry about it at all. I don't care who you are, what you are, work on something else. And that may be true. Like I said, if you got some overweight, sedentary, diabetic, insulin resistant, inflamed, high blood pressure person with metabolic syndrome times five, and you say, just work on a metabolic disease, just get lean, stop eating sugar, whatever, fix your glucose. Yeah. then that LDL falls out of it, it becomes also non-contributory. Is that, yes. in your opinion, or using whatever scientific, scientific rationale you have, if LDL is not the causal factor for heart disease, heart disease clearly occurs, something's causing it, There's, it's happening, yes. why? why? Why are we seeing that? Is it Malcolm Kendrick's uh, hypercoagulability? Is it inflammation? Is it some, some combination of the above? If LDL is not the variable that is as most of medicine is LDL yeah. myopically focused. It's LDL, it's LDL, it's LDL. Yeah. The analogy I use is yes, okay, if you have to have LDL to have a have an atheroma uh, or have atherosclerotic disease, then we should just lower it down to zero. That's what we're being told. We see Thomas Day Spring and some of these other knuckleheads. Mm. We need to get LDL down as low as humanly possible. Let's get it, let's slam PCSK9 inhibitors and bempedoic acid and statins mm. and uh, as a tembine and everything in there to get it to zero and you won't have heart disease. My response to that is sexually trans syphilis really sucks and males can't have syphilis. So they don't have a penis. So let's just lop off penises and be done with it. It's just, to me, it's the same analogy. Anyway, you've been listening to Nicholas too much. I think. <laughs> you think? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. This is very simple, Sean. It, it yeah. really is very simple. The analogy that I use often is that every single time you turn on the television and see a rampant forest fire burning, there will be shots on the nightly news of fire crews running around. Right. Ergo, what we need to do to deal with this forest fire scourge is ban fire crews because they're always there. Hmm. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so so it, it, it is, the, is I've heard that uh, it's cholesterol is the 
repair mechanism. It's the attempt at repair Correct. for I mean, underlying vascular damage. That's right. And it's, you yes. know, it's interesting. I mean, in some of the animal models, the way that they create atherosclerotic diseases, they friggin' run a, uh, a, like a wire brush in the vessel and scrape the hell out of it so that there's yep. damage. And then only subsequent to that do they see this sort of macrophage, foamy macrophage, cholesterol inundation type of thing. So it's yes. an interesting concept. So and, the absolute slam dunk, these are the facts, whether anybody likes them or not, they're still the facts. The underpinning etiological cause of atherosclerosis is inflammation of the vascular epithelial cells and mechanical damage mm -hmm. to those cells, yeah. possibly chemical damage as well. Yeah. So Which the inflammation things. would be smoking, hyperglycemia. Mechanical yeah. damage would be a blood pressure phenomenon, which yes. is secondary probably to inflammation anyway. Yeah, sure. So that's, the, and I certainly don't discount that that sort of pathogenesis sort of argument. And we'll see, like I said, obviously there is a lot of people out there, obviously your, your sort of belief in this and your opinion and, and, and to a degree mine is not shared by the average lipidologist, the average cardiologist. Yeah. Most of them, 99% of them would say, we disagree based on associational data and right. Mendelian randomization studies and yep. mechanistic studies and on and mm -hmm. on. But anyway, yep. Yep. Um, here's so another one. What they're unable to do is to actually provide any cause and effect evidence to support their hypothesis. Ergo, as scientists, if they were scientists, they it would be their responsibility to reject their hypothesis on the basis that they cannot support it. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So.